Welcome to this lesson on the Astra MX-1 Compact Provisioning How to Add a User. This is part one in a two-part series. In this lesson, we'll cover the following topics. We'll use the MX-1 Manager Provisioning Tool to add a user. We'll assign an extension. We'll configure a personal number list. We'll configure a function key. We'll look at additional settings in the advanced extension information. And we'll add and configure a voicemail box. In this lesson, part one, We'll cover the first three objectives, and we'll cover the last two objectives in part two. So let's get started. The first thing that you'll need to do is to launch the MX1 Manager provisioning application. Then enter the username and password to log in. In this lesson, we're just going to concentrate on the Users tab. That brings up four more submenus. Out of these four, we'll select User. So our tab choices were Users, then User. In the opening screen, we have a search box. You can enter in the username, extension, or department if you're looking for a specific piece of information. Or if you want to view the entire list, you can enter the word all. Entering the word all will display all users currently configured on the system. Our goal for this lesson is to add a user, so I'll click on the add button. Adding a user is a two-step process. The first step is where we'll enter information about the user. The second step is where we'll enter information about the extension, the phone options, and the voicemail box. So on this page, for my first step, I'll enter in the user's name, the user ID, a password, their email address, SMS information, the next three fields can be used in conjunction with the directory, an alternate first name, alternate last name, and any keywords associated with this user. You can add a mobile number, and what department they belong to. As we go through this application, at the bottom of the screens, you may see a button labeled Advanced or Basic. When you are in the Basic mode, the screen will display a solid set of options that you will use for most users. If you click on the Advanced button, the screen will change and display an extended set of options. As I go through this lesson, I'll click on the Advanced button so that you can see the differences. The Advanced Options, or Settings, are displayed in light gray. As I scroll down, I'll see my Advanced option is displayed in gray and has a heading of Preferences. And under that, the option is Use Last Selection. This means however the last user was built, along with the server information, will be used as the default information for any additional users I build. I'll leave this box unchecked and return back to the basic display. I've entered in the necessary information on this page and I'm ready to continue. I'll click the Next button to go to the next page and continue with Step 2. If I know the extension number I want to use for this user, I can enter it. From the drop-down list, I'll need to select my telephony server. If there's a template built, I can select the template from the drop-down list. For this user, I'd like to see what extensions are available before I assign one, so I'll click the Add button. The first thing that I'll need to define is what type of device or extension this will be. My user, Bill Smith, has an Astra 6757i SIP phone. So from the drop-down list, I'll select IP, which includes SIP, H323, and IP deck phones. I'll click Next to continue. The first drop-down box displays a range of extensions that are available. I'll select the first range, 2600 to 2630. The next box lets me pick a specific extension that's available in this range to be assigned to Bill Smith. For this example, I'll select extension 2614. The description that I'll use for this user it's the location of their office. They're on the first floor, on the north end of the building, room 206. Select the server number. This is the server where the extension will be stored. The next field is Common Service Profile. The Common Service Profiles define the privileges and settings for IP, mobile, DEC, and virtual extensions. For this user, I'll select CSP0. If applicable, select the Customer Group. The Customer Group feature makes it possible for companies to subdivide their resources or make it possible for several smaller companies 
to share the same system. You may have also heard of this feature referred to as the tenant feature. Select the language for the extension. Moving on to the next field, I'm going to take this opportunity right now to show you the help feature. To the left of the options, you've probably noticed a question mark. Clicking on the question mark will bring up a pop-up window that will explain the option. Let me demonstrate. I'll click on the question mark and now we can see the pop-up window. And it tells us that a backup answering position number is a PSTN number and must be provided for all IP extensions located at branch offices. An IP extension at a branch office must be configured to periodically re-register to the telephony server. If the IP extension fails to re-register on time, the telephony server will consider it to be marooned and will redirect the incoming calls to its backup answering position or backup PSTN number. I'm not using this feature, so I'll move on to the next option. When using the boss secretary feature, the boss's phone must be a digital phone and when this feature is activated, all calls to the digital phone can be directly diverted to up to 10 extensions. Once the feature is initiated, the feature can be turned on or off as needed. Under Identity, I've got the first and last name of the user. Now let's look at the personal number list. The personal number list can be customized with up to 10 alternate numbers. When this feature is activated and you receive an incoming call, the call will be routed sequentially to each number in your list until the call is answered. Like I said, you can have 10 numbers in each list and for flexibility you're given 5 lists. Let me demonstrate what this would look like. I'll fill in the information in call sequence number 1. For this example, I'm going to route calls to my extension first and then in the second sequence I'll route the calls to my cell phone. The call duration is measured in seconds, not rings. So for this example, I'm going to put in 8 seconds. Moving to the next field, if this number is busy, what do I want to do with the call? I can select Reroute. The call is deflected according to the reroute settings for the number. For example, send it to voicemail. I can select Busy Tone. This is where the call sequence will stop. And I'll play a busy tone for the caller. I can select Next Sequence which will send the call to the next number in the sequence. Or I can make it jump to a specific sequence number and follow those routing instructions. The next option is Use Once. If you select this option, when a call is being diverted or rerouted through these call sequences, if you receive a second incoming call, the second call will skip the previous unanswered call sequence numbers and continue down the line with the next call sequence. The next option is accept calls from. And for each call sequence where you're routing to an alternate number, you can define what type of calls you'll accept to route to this alternate number. Your choices are internal, operator, or external. You would repeat this process for each alternate scenario you would like the system to try. In sequence number two, I'll enter in my cell phone number. And if I had additional numbers to enter, such as an alternate work number or a home phone number, I would enter these in sequence numbers 3 through 10. The basic display only shows three call sequence scenarios. If I click on the Advanced button, I'll see all 10. I'll click on the Basic button to return back to the Basic view. When I'm satisfied with my choices, I'll click on the Continue button. Now when I look at my personal number list, I see list number 1 is now active. By using the personal number list, I can give my customers one number to call me and then have the system route to a variety of numbers that I set up so that it can find me and I never miss a call. That completes the personal number list. The next field we'll look at is phone type. I'll select the phone that I'm using. In this case, it's the Astra 6757i. I have the option to change some of the function keys or soft keys on this phone. I'll click on the change button. This brings me to the next screen where it shows me I have six buttons that I can program. For the 6757i SIP phone, these buttons are the top six soft keys. I'll click on the first button to program the first soft key. Key position one is soft key number one. 
Next, under Function, from the drop-down list, I can select one of five functions. I can clear the function key. I can select Telephony Number Selection, which is like a speed dial number. I can select Multiple Name Selection. This is like a monitor key. I can select Malicious Call Tracing. This sends a code back to the telephone company in the event of a malicious call and tells their switch to send the call to a log file. And my last option, if I have an external server set up to record Voice over IP calls, I can set up a button that I can push to record my current Voice over IP call. For demonstration purposes, I'll set up a speed dial number on this first soft key that will speed dial a regular number. I can repeat the process for soft keys 2 through 6. When I'm finished, I'll click the Continue button. So that was an example of how to program the function keys. The next field we'll look at is Hunt Groups. If you would like this user to belong to a specific Hunt Group, highlight the Hunt Group from the available Hunt Group window. Then click on the right arrow to add your user to that Hunt Group. On my system, we set up the Voicemail system as a Hunt Group. While the Voicemail Hunt Group shows up in my available window, this is strictly for Voicemail resources and you don't want to add your user to this Hunt Group. In my example, there are no other Hunt Groups to add. But if the administrator had built additional Hunt Groups, they would be available here. The next option is Call Pickup Group. All users that are in the same Call Pickup Group will have the option and the ability to answer a call for another user that's in the same Call Pickup Group. For this example, this user doesn't belong to any Call Pickup Groups. This completes Part 1 of a two-part lesson. In this lesson, we assigned an extension, we configured the personal number list, we configured a function key. In part two, we will continue with the advanced extension information and how to add a voicemail box. So for all of us here, we would like to thank you for your interest in Astra. If you would like to know more about our award-winning products, please visit our website at www.astrausa.com or call us at 1-800-468-3266. And at the prompt, select option 2.